R News is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight on R News, government seeks to borrow nearly $1 billion. The opposition and business community weigh in on the new budget, plus why a local DJ was fined $20,000. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, as the country continues to wrestle with the fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announcing in Parliament today his administration is seeking to borrow nearly $1 billion in the upcoming fiscal year. Tonight, our news has extensive team coverage of the Prime Minister's budget communication, as well as reaction from the opposition and business community. We start things off with Jasmine Brown, who was in the House of Assembly today. Jasmine? That's right, Christina. The Prime Minister stood on his feet for nearly three hours today as he outlined his administration's plans for the country's finances over the next fiscal year. Extraordinary times call for an extraordinary response. Dr. Minish read two borrowing resolutions in the House of Assembly after he laid out the government's plan to restore the country's fiscal health and improve revenue administration. Minnis said the government intends to borrow $115.2 million for mitigation and treatment of COVID-19 to support the public hospital authorities' modernization of the health system and to incentivize small and medium-sized businesses. Minnis also said the government is looking to borrow up to $871.6 million to finance the deficiency of revenue over expenditure in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. As a result, by June 2022, government debt is projected to swell to $10.3 billion, equating to 84.3% of GDP. I want to reiterate that in December of last year, the government invoked the Exceptional Circumstances Clause 13 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018, which allowed for a temporary departure from the agreed fiscal targets given the twin impacts of Hurricane Dorian and COVID-19 pandemic. It was detailed in the 2020 Fiscal Strategy Report that the current circumstances would translate into a two-year delay in the achievement of the target debt-to-GDP ratio of 50%. The adjusted date is now fiscal year 2030-31. Total government revenues are projected at $2.247 billion, representing an increase of $588.3 million, or 35.5%, over the projected 2020-2021 total revenue. Despite this improvement, revenues are projected to remain 7.5% below the $2.426 billion posted in fiscal year 2018-2019 reflecting the fact that our economy will not likely return to full capacity during the upcoming fiscal year. Recurrent expenditure is estimated at $2.83 billion, an increase of $270.1 million, or 10.6% increase over the projected spend for 2020-2021. Minnis said as a result of the revenue and expenditure developments, the fiscal deficit is estimated to come in at $951.8 million, or 7.7% of GDP. Now, the Prime Minister also had a lot to say about value-added tax and exemptions for businesses. For that angle, I hand it over to our Kyle Joaquin. Kyle? Thanks, Jasmine. Well, from the removal of VAT on things like baby diapers to even feminine hygiene products, there were a lot of changes to taxes announced today. Come July 1st, the list of VAT-free items will be extended to include baby and adult diapers, sanitary pads and tampons for women, construction and repairs to churches, a number of IT-related hardware and cabling, and conveyances of properties under 250000 on Abaco and Grand Bahama. What that proves is you reduce taxes, you increase revenue, and you increase employment. But there are some areas which Minna says will see an increase in VAT. The rate will increase from 10 to 12 percent on realty transactions for the portion of a real estate transaction over two million dollars. There will also be an increase in excise tax on Cheroos and Cigarillos. 
There will also be legislative amendments to improve real property tax collections for commercial properties. We have had situations where owners of significant commercial properties collect substantial rent from businesses but are delinquent in the payment of taxes. According to Minis, government projects those measures will yield an additional $50 million. The Prime Minister also announcing an incentive program to allow businesses to apply for a VAT tax credit to cover the salaries of up to 10 new employees brought onto their payrolls as of July 1st. The allowable tax credit will be up to $400 per week per employee. Then there's the Small Business Tax Concessions and Relief Program for small businesses with an annual turnover under $5 million. Every Bahamian small business and entrepreneur will be able to apply for and obtain duty concessions on all items needed to start or expand their businesses. Minutes also outlining several major investments being made in the upcoming budget, including over $100 million for hospital upgrades to PMH and Rand Memorial, $31 million for renewable and resilient energy projects, over $10 million for Family Island Airport repairs and upgrades, $4 million to repair and install proper drainage in Pinewood Gardens, and $5 million to support the infrastructure to build government service lots. Over $70 million targeted by the Princess Margaret Hospital. And more than $19 million budgeted for the commencement of the new four-story tower expansion at the Rand Memorial Hospital. Hoping to create more opportunities for new college graduates, Minnesota said the government has allocated $1.5 million for the enlistment of 75 college recruits ages 18 to 30 throughout the public service. The government also increasing the budget for a number of government entities, including the Department of Social Services, Ministry of Education, Ministry of National Security, and the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation. Well, the opposition certainly had a lot to say regarding today's budget communication. For more on that, we go to our Jared Higgs. Jared. Thanks, Kyle. Well, PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper says there isn't enough in the budget to help people affected by Hurricane Dorian and the pandemic. He also says that cannabis should have been mentioned. I watched them with their exuberance today banging on the tables at every chance they got. <coughs> Meanwhile, people are living in cars. Cooper described the budget as an election budget and says it shows the government is in an alternate universe. Single mothers don't know tonight how they are going to feed their children. Persons who are unemployed are seeking unemployment <laughs> assistance from the government. God, yeah. But they are being told that since they got assistance during Dorian, they cannot get assistance now. Cooper criticized Minnis for failing to mention cannabis during the communication. He says it speaks to a lack of longer term strategy and thinking. While he says the PLP expects the cannabis bill to be tabled before the next election, he described it as a ploy. I am not surprised that when it comes to the creation of new industries, when it comes to ideas for economic growth, that this wasn't touted as one of the things that could help to benefit the Bahamas. An announcement by Dr. Minnis about investments being made in Ragged Island was also met with cynicism. Cooper says he wishes the Prime Minister announced that a nurse was going to the island. Irma happened three or four years ago, and still we're talking about providing funding for Ragged Island. The, the, the solar system that was implemented where the Prime Minister went on 60 Minutes to brag about it is still not powering the houses. Tax reform is another big topic that the PLP deputy leader says wasn't sufficiently addressed. The PLP will have that discussion. We have begun the, the process of tax reform by reducing the rate of VAT. Uh, to 10 percent. The Prime Minister announced several tax breaks for businesses looking to expand. Our Jillian Gray spoke to businesses and got their reaction. Hey Jillian, how you doing? That's right, Jared. Those tax breaks for small and expanding businesses will include duty-free concessions for their first stock of inventory. For business owner Raquel Dean, who started her business, Fries with Benefits, during the height of the pandemic, those concessions mean that she'll be able to reach her business goals sooner. Being a blooming business, it's a good opportunity to expand 
the our horizons. Mm -hmm. um, I know with working with food, a lot of persons are now in the food market. And sometimes when I go to buy certain products locally, they're unavailable. Mm -hmm. So now with this opportunity, now affords me the opportunity to go abroad and bring my stuff in. For businesses that make less than $5 million annually, the Small Business Tax Concession and Relief Program will provide duty-free concessions on all items needed to start or expand a business. Dean says she's looking forward to eventually acquiring a storefront. We have to take it and we have to be able to expand. For CBS Bahamas Vice President Brent Burrows, the incentives couldn't have come at a better time as they're about to open a new location. People compare our pricing directly to the United States. So the lower we can get our prices to be equal to the United States, the better off for us. So people generally, a lot of people don't, don't add in that duty factor when they're comparing prices. Now added to those duty breaks is the Employment Incentive Program, which will give businesses a $400 VAT break per week per employee for up to 10 new employees as of July 1st. Both Burroughs and Dean say they'll be looking to add employees and take advantage of that incentive. So that gives businesses a reason to go out and, and, and look for employees, especially those that have been putting that off because of the economic uh, climate. We do need more staffing as we expand, so this is also a good opportunity as well to um, employ some persons into the workforce because I know a lot of persons were impacted during the COVID. So it's such a great joy to be able to help someone or other persons to be able to find a job. You know? Now, the Prime Minister estimated that the Employee Incentive Program will get at least 2,500 people back to work. It's approximately a $40 million tax concession. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Jillian. While the government has spent over $290 million on its response to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to Prime Minister Minnis, who says that figure doesn't include the millions in lost tax revenue. This does not include the millions of dollars in lost tax revenue and economic activity for the Bahamas. Minnis added that $26 million has been pumped into health and safety measures, $118 million on unemployment assistance, $33 million on social assistance, and $44 million has been spent to maintain government payroll. $53.3 million in business continuity support. To Bahamian entrepreneurs and small businesses, and this investment provided hundreds of Bahamian businesses access to grants and government guaranteed loans administered by the SPDC to survive, expand, and jumpstart. Well, it's a beautiful, clear evening in the capital. Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, Christina, and a happy Wednesday evening, everybody. Beautiful conditions on the outside once again this evening as temperatures remain in the mid to upper 70s. 77 outside our studios with just a few clouds. Your winds are out of the east. They are light at around six knots. Feels like temperature still in the mid to upper 70s. Satellite view, quiet day around the islands. Lots of sunshine once again. A little bit of a breeze, seeing some streamers across uh, most of the islands. Maybe some isolated showers downstream, but beautiful conditions once again setting up for the evening. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Straight ahead, the PM gives junk newers a reason to rush. Plus, a DJ pleads guilty to drug-related charges. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system. The Minnis administration has allocated $2 million to help the Junkanoo community establish a permanent headquarters. During his budget communication, the Prime Minister said that's not all the cultural community will get. This will be supplemented with provisions of crown, crown land to the major established Junkanoo groups and with grants from BTC Feeder Trust that was set up for social, cultural, and civic endeavors such as this. Minnis also outlining other projects budgeted in the upcoming fiscal year. 
$5 million to support the infrastructure build-out of the government service, service lots initiative in Prospect Ridge, Carmichael, and eventually throughout the Bahamas. And speaking of the type of subdivisions that were commencing in the Prospect Ridge West area for young professionals will be done throughout the Bahamas. We've ident already identified projects in South Lutra. We've identified properties in Exuma. While well, one of two men charged in connection with a drug bust at LPIA was fined $20,000 after he entered guilty pleas to drug-related charges today. Giorgio Bain has the details. 22-year-old Raymond Evans of Musgrove Street, seen in the white shirt, and 21-year-old Sean Moss of Yellow Elder were brought before Magistrate Andrew Forrest by officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit Wednesday afternoon to face four drug-related charges. The pair faced charges in connection with the May 23rd drug bust at Linden Pinland International Airport, where officers discovered a black taped package containing $20,000 worth of suspected cocaine inside a backpack. The pair were subsequently charged with conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs with intent to supply, possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply, conspiracy to export dangerous drugs, and taking preparatory steps to export dangerous drugs. Evans, represented by attorney Kendall Wright, pleaded guilty to all charges. Evans told police that he received a call from someone that he knows only as Rod, who told him to go to a bathroom inside the airport. From a garbage bin, he removed a black brick and taped it to his back. Evans's lawyer expressed remorse on behalf of his client and told the court that the 22-year-old DJ deserves a second chance, as he has no prior convictions, pleaded guilty at the earliest chance, and did not waste the court's time. Magistrate Forbes told Evans that it was not a fly-by-night offense that he committed and that his decision would alter his life forever. He told Evans that given his youth and possibility of rehabilitation, he will not impose a custodial sentence. He fined Evans $20,000, which must be paid by July, or Evans faces two years in jail. Meanwhile, Moss entered not guilty pleas to all charges and was granted $7,000 bail with two shorters. He returns to court on October 25th. Reporting for R News, I'm Georgie Bain. Coming up, how alive is making a difference in the community, plus the Suns get burned in the playoffs. We have the details when R News returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put... This is our news. Welcome back. Alive continuing its community outreach by presenting checks to four civic organizations today. Marketing Operations Manager Ken Denique Campbell Moss says Alive was happy to assist the Catholic Board of Education, the Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year Foundation, the Bahamas AIDS Foundation, and Natural Empress, who's helping to put on a food drive and clothing drive. Alive is a very civic-minded organization. We were 100% Bahamian-owned, and with that being said, we wanted to make sure that we gave back to the community. And here, along with us, we have a multifaceted arena of persons that are in the community that have requested sponsorship from Alive, and as a result of that, they are here today for our check presentation. Representatives of the various organizations say the donations from Alive will go a long way to make a difference in the lives of Bahamians. Today we are truly grateful for the contribution in our 25th year. Alive this year have donated three um, $2,000 scholarships which will assist um, a student from the Providence, a student from Grand Bahama, and a student from Abaco. Many people believe that because you're an independent school, you have funds. And so when you have supportive partners like Alive, this really drives home the point that funds are needed in all school systems. And in sports tonight, DeAndre Ayton and the Suns take their first loss of the playoffs. Marcellus Hall has more. 
Thanks a lot, Christina. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcella Saul. Oh, this guy behind me, DeAndre Ayton and his Phoenix Suns, they're in the midst of the NBA playoffs uh, right now, trying to get it done against the defending champion, LA Lakers, last night. Going into action, up 1-0, trying to take a 2-0 lead. Let's see exactly how it played out. DeAndre Ayton and his Phoenix Suns continuing playoff action last night, going up against the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. Suns already up 1-0 in this best of seven, trying to take a 2-0 lead with the win. Things not going according to plan, however, as the Lakers, they get the job done. Pulling off the 109 to 102 victory to tie the series at one apiece. Aiton would finish with 22 points on 11 of 13 shooting. He would also have 10 rebounds in the contest. Series now shifts to LA. They play game three on Thursday. John Quell Jones and the Connecticut Sun also seeing their unbeaten streak come to an end. Sun taking on the Seattle Storm last night in a game that had to go to overtime to decide a winner. Storm holding off of the win, 90-87. John Quell, 28 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, and 2 blocks. This would come in a losing effort. Loss drops the Connecticut team now to second in the Eastern Conference. They take on the Washington Mystics when their season continues on Friday. And there it is, a check on sports for you here on this Wednesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Marcellus. Still to come, UB graduates prepared to enter the nursing profession. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. Pleasant and sunny conditions ahead. Greg is back in the Weather Center with more. Thanks again, Christina, and a happy Wednesday evening once again, Bahamas. Beautiful conditions around the island says that high pressure system remains in charge. Very dry air mass across the area. We're seeing not much in terms of clouds as well as precipitation. That dry air mass will continue to be with us over the next several days. But we do expect the frontal boundary to get into the Northwest Bahamas by Monday, so we could see an increase in some shower activity by then. Your boating forecast for all areas tonight to tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the northeast to east at around 10 to 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Tide will be low at 8.44 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Monday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night, everyone. Christina. Thanks, Greg. Well, the University of the Bahamas holding a pinning ceremony for the graduates of the Nurses and Allied Health Professions program this morning under the theme, Unleashing Our Creativity, the Key to a Sustainable Future. Class of 2020 to 2021, we started this journey as strangers and ending it as family. We now join the larger family of nursing professionals in this country amidst the uncertainty of a protracted global pandemic, notwithstanding the stark reality. I am convinced that we are poised for greatness. The Vice President of Academic Affairs stressing the importance of healthcare professionals during the COVID-19 pandemic. This global pandemic really showed us the true value of the nursing profession and gave us a renewed appreciation and respect for nurses everywhere. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.